On the west coast of Scotland, opposite the lovely Isle of Arran, is a small town called Saltcoats. A town unlikely to hit the national news, perhaps. But that's exactly what happened on the afternoon of Saturday, the 5th of January, 1991. On this particular day, a combination of severe winds and high tides caused considerable damage to many parts of the Ayrshire coast. Quite large sections of these railings were removed by the sea and the railway itself was out of action for several hours.
Saturday is always a busy day in the town, and these freak conditions took many shoppers and residents by surprise. On occasions of this kind, lives can often be at risk. But fortunately, owing to the quick response of the emergency services, casualties were very light. Although the flooding began in the early afternoon, it was many hours before the water receded. In fact, there was concern that a further flooding could occur on the next high tide. However, this did not happen. By this time it was dark, but some stranded residents and shop workers still needed to be rescued, many by boat.
When asked how the fire brigade were originally informed of the flood, Station Officer Dodds of the Strathclyde Fire Brigade said, At 14.15 hours on the Saturday afternoon, a call was received by, by our brigade control that there was serious flooding in Dockhead Street, Solcoats. One appliance from Adrosson Fire Station attended the initial call. What was your primary objective? The leading fireman who attended with that appliance immediately made pumps three when they realised the flooding was serious and that a small fire had occurred in one of the buildings. This small fire had occurred due to the junction box shorting because of the flood water. Our immediate objective was to put this small fire out and the other small fires that were occurring at the same time. Altogether, how many firemen were involved in the operation? Seven appliances attended with a total of 35 personnel. At what time did the flood water recede? At approximately 2100 hours that particular evening, we left the incident after we made sure that all persons were safe and accounted for. Did you have to evacuate many people flooded? 225 people were removed from various streets in the town centre. Not all these people were removed by the fire service, some were removed by the coast guard. But we removed a fair amount of people, either by carrying them out, leading them to safety, or by the use of the boat. After the drama of the day before, worried traders returned to survey the damage. The full consequences of what had happened were not immediately apparent, especially as power supplies were cut off. A sense of bewilderment pervaded the atmosphere as the shop traders tried to restore order. Produce of this sort would normally be sold by Saturday evening, a sign of how quickly the premises had to be vacated. <laughs> Clearing up operations could only proceed using electricity from mobile generators. <laughs> Scottish Power worked relentlessly to restore electricity but this took several days in some cases.
Attention was also necessary for individual electrical installations, many of which had been submerged in the flood. Property in Windmill Street was also affected. Mr. Arthur Bruce, manager of the indoor market, describes his experience. What really happened, Daniel, when we about 2.15 on Saturday, all of a sudden everything was normal and the next thing is there's sort of about maybe 18 inches of water going down in front of Windmill Street. The next thing that I went to, and I, lowered, I went and lowered the doors, and uh, before we knew where we were, it came in the back doors. So we did the same there, and then we found ourselves immersed in about a foot to 18 inches of water. It just came right out through the complex. The people that was in the complex went up the stairs to the cafeteria, and then the next thing is the fire people came and we had arranged to get them evacuated to a local town hall. But it was too sudden a flood to get everything out of the way, so this is a devastating effect it's had on the complex itself. You know. And uh, the town itself has never experienced anything like this, you know, as far as uh, firemen and all the other people concerned. So I don't know how long it'll take for the place to get back to normal. Mm. Moriarty's had similar problems. Mr. Robert Gibson put it like this. We actually got a phone call from the police. It says to us, you want to put sandbags at your door. So we looked outside when Mill Street and there were not a bit of water. It was at two o'clock. For five past two, we're under two foot of water. We opened the back doors and people were running about actually panicking. A lot of children on that. So, me and Mr. Best went out the back door and we shepherded everybody inside and we took them all up the stair. The children, I don't know how I can put this, but the children were in that big a panic. They were actually thought, they were actually drowning because the water was that deep. So we took them all up the stair. Mr. Best and myself, we turned around and says, give the veins soup. So, by luck, we had the chef in at the time. So the chef went through and made soup, tea and coffee, sandwiches and all that. And we gave it, we actually had about, about 300 people at the stay at the time. Not only were commercial premises at risk, but many private properties suffered serious damage too. Mr. John Donald, who lives near the seafront, commented, Well, basically everything happened that fast. We're at the front there, watching the waves coming over, just a normal storm. And the water just started building up, building up quicker and quicker. So we're about, before we knew it, we had about 18 inches of water coming in the front doors. And we're trying to contain it in the front door with the best resources we had, old blankets and blankets off beds, we're stuck in beds, blankets, bricks from the back door, etc. trying to stem it. But the water was just coming in and in. So at this time the wife's at the back of the house, we've been fighting this for about an hour. The wife at the back of the house and she started panicking, the water's coming in the back, the water's coming in the back. And I came round and looked, I hadn't watched time, but we came round and looked and I seen the water running in the side path. It just getting stronger and stronger. And about another ten minutes, quite an hour later, she says the water's up to the windows at the back. I had about five foot of water here in the back door that where you can see. So by this time everybody's panicking. And what I believe what saved us as you can see here, this wall collapsed, taking away the hut and the damage it's extended. If that hadn't have done, I believe it would have been right deeper deeper trouble. It would have come right in the windows and flooded the whole house. But other than that we're 
works now that everything was lost and then no lease was lost or anything like that. But there's always that to be thankful for. In nearby Sydney Street, water actually penetrated a number of homes, causing severe hardship to residents. Help was made available at the town hall for those whose homes had become uninhabitable. January of 1991 is going to be remembered in Saltcoats for many years to come. But this wasn't the first time the town has experienced this phenomena. It is often said that history repeats itself. In this case it has. For in 1926, a similar situation arose, although it would appear that the water did not reach the depth in Dockhead Street, which it did on this occasion. These pictures have been made available by kind permission of Mr. Brian Kemp, La Scala Cinema. Surely the present residents of Saltcoats will be happy not to see any further occurrences of this sort. After this brief look back in history, we now return to the present day. Now the repair work must begin. By Monday morning, the full impact of the tragedy was becoming apparent. Outside help was necessary to cope with the scale of the problem, and companies such as Disaster Call were used for this purpose.
For most of the shops, it was a case of calling on insurance assessors for advice. What I was wanting to do is, is get the stock from the large shop so that we can get one of the shops open again. By Tuesday morning, the clearing up operation was fully underway. Nearly all carpets have had to be replaced, and in some cases, floors too. Cowan's was one of the first shops to get back into business again. Mr Baxter, your shop has suffered from flooding before, but when did you realise that this was something much more serious? Uh, we noticed that the drains outside the shop were starting to overflow around about 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Uh, we immediately got on the telephone to the fire brigade and asked for their assistance. We formed a barrier at our side of the door by putting packets of bin bags down and standing on them. When the fire brigade came along, they put some uh, sandbags at the other side of the door and tried to stop the water coming in. The water level between two o'clock and half past two was constantly rising and by half past two uh, it was at a level of perhaps a foot, a foot and a half in the alleyway and at that time we were told to get out the premises as quickly as possible which we did through our rear entrance. Where did all the water come from? Well, certainly the is a very strong element of bad drainage. The initial water was coming as a backflow from the, the drains. The drains that go out into the sea were flowing back the way and causing water to come out the, the drain entrance here and the level started to rise. This was a situation where possibly flooding couldn't have been totally avoided, some sort of flooding couldn't have been totally avoided, but it might have been lessened through better drainage and certainly stronger sea defences. I must say that I'm very concerned for the, the safety of the people uh, that live in Sockets near the sea. Did the emergency services help you to evacuate? Uh, it certainly told us very forcefully to get out and uh, we just did what we were told and uh, get out as quickly as possible. How long will it be before you're operational as a business again? Uh, well, we're already perhaps a week and a half into the clear-up and it's going to be at least another month to six weeks uh, before we're open again. Uh, there must be something can be done uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again or to the extent that it has happened. We're very fortunate in Sawkits that there was no loss of life. In order for Scottish Power to restore electricity to all the shops, large sections of the precinct were dug up to repair damaged cables soaked by the flood water.
This shopping precinct is usually occupied by pedestrians, but in the days following the flood, many different vehicles could be seen in the street. Here is Mr. Eddington of Munro the Butchers of Sort Coats. He's able to tell us now how he felt on the day of the flood. Absolutely terrible. The, the disaster, disaster area. The shop was nearly six feet in water. The stock was all lost. It will amount to a lot of money. Uh, other than that, the preparing getting the place tidied up again, which has taken us very near a week. The, the stocks, as I say, have all been condemned by environmental health people and we are not allowed to open until the environmental health passed the shop. And that's all been done, Mr. Eddington? Has that's it? all been done, yes, we just opened today. What, what would you feel um, needs to be done now for the town? Apart from the new drainage system, maybe a, a reinforced wall at the sea, out at the beach, just to stop it or even have it. Yeah. Of course, the local council have built up the appearance of salt coat so beautifully the last 10 years. I mean, it's been a tremendous amount of work done. In a few hours, such a lot of that's been wiped off, hasn't right. it? Yes, it all happens so quickly, yeah. What, oh. a, yeah, what about the appearance of the town here? Uh, the town, the, the actual shopping centre itself, you know, the uh, pedestrian arcade is a disaster area. At the moment, it's terrible. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, there's lots of business confidence, isn't there? You know, well, people wonder whether they'll all get caught in the next flood. That's right. There'll be a lot of shops not opening it. Ah, Again, yeah. as far as I know, they'll not be opening yet. And that'll depress the whole town. All that, yes. So, there's great need for help. That's right. Business is hard enough to get without having things like this happen. Is this to get Another one? That's okay. Another one, yes. Harris of Saltcoats, renowned for their technical expertise, suffered considerable disruption as you can see. The carpet, damaged beyond repair, is being replaced. Although there was much to be sad about, Mr Mackay drew attention to a positive aspect. It is a positive side to the problem. I've been really amazed at how good everyone's been. I mean, there's been a comradeship that we haven't had for a long time. It must be very like a wartime experience yeah. where people get together. The, the efforts of the local authority people, the police, the, the firemen, I mean, all the people that have come in to help and the, the disaster have been, it's been really tremendous. The and friends you've built up through the years. That's right. That's and a number of our customers have come in and asked to help and wished as well. It really, it's, it's been amazing, and that is the positive side too. Yes, thanks very much. This was the scene in Saltcoats, one week on from the flood.
The town was just beginning to show signs of recovery. Obviously, a great deal of stock was affected and where food was concerned, this had to be destroyed. However, many bargain hunters were quick to take advantage of the sales which inevitably followed. Mr. McCullen of Fraser's Travel tells how he felt on the day of the flood. On the day of the flood I was on duty here and uh, we saw a, a stream running down the, the, the street. In 20 minutes time it was, it was a flood and to be honest my first thought was I hope my insurance is valid. Uh, my second thought was we'd better start a start to think about getting out because um, it looked as if it could get worse, it didn't seem as if it was going to abate and it, it didn't. Uh, we got out at three o'clock and uh, the staff had to be carried out and I was pleased that we had gone because it looked dangerous and uh, I worried for my staff and I worried for my business, I didn't know whether I would have a business come Monday morning. What would you say is the, the most urgent need now in the town, Mr McCallum? Uh, I think there's probably a lack of confidence as far as the whole of the traders of Dock Head Street are concerned. Nobody knows exactly who's going to reopen. Um, the shopkeepers, especially the private shopkeepers who need to earn their livelihood in Dock Head Street, uh, have concern that some of the larger companies will move away from the town and there will be... Depressed empty. area. Yeah. Depressed area. Yeah. So you would feel there was a really urgent need for help here? Uh, there has to be help. Uh, there has to be help to build up the street uh, and build up the town. The town's had its heart taken away because this is the centre of the town that's been thumped. And it doesn't matter what it is, be it a person or a town, if you thump the centre it won't feel very well and this town feels very ill at the moment. Thanks very much.